it's Jesse V. And yes, I do have a new background behind me. If you did not see in my last video, this is gonna be our November background. It's super purple, I love the skulls. And if you would like to win it, all you have to do is go to my other YouTube channel, it's called Moot. Go and subscribe there, and if you did not know, Moot is like another character that I play. I made that channel like two years ago, and I haven't posted there in such a long time. So I wanna start doing it again. So if you would like to win this background, just go and subscribe and comment anything you want on all the videos that are posted there. There's not very many, don't worry. But if I see your name popping up a lot, I will choose you to win this backdrop. So as you can tell by the title of today's video, we're gonna be talking about some very creepy fairy tales. But before I get started, because the theme of this video is fairy tales, I thought it would be fitting to show you guys some new fairy necklaces that I made myself. You guys know I love to do the handmade jewelry thing. So I made these super delicate fairy wing choker necklaces. Now they don't fit very tightly around your neck. They actually fall around your collarbone, but they're still short enough to be called choker necklaces. The wings on the necklace are super delicate and there's iridescent beads going up the chain. So I have 12 of this style available. And then I also made slightly bigger necklaces. So these ones are a lot longer as you can see. The fairy wing is much bigger and it's actually really thick. So the other necklace is super delicate and this one is a much thicker, sturdier wing. And I have four of these available. Now, as you guys know, once they're sold out, I don't make any more of this style because I like to move on and make different, more interesting things. So if you would like one of these necklaces, all you have to do is head over to my Whimsy Wonders Instagram account and all the information and links will be over there. So with that, let's jump right into today's video. So you guys probably know by now that most fairy tales have actually very dark backstories. Like tons of classic Disney movies are based on old creepy fairy tales and I've done entire videos on those Disney stories. But the other day I stumbled across this website talking about the creepiest fairy tales that have ever been made. And I knew I just had to make this video to talk about how bizarre these stories are. I cannot believe these were written for kids back in the day. Now most of the stories I'm gonna be talking about come from the Brothers Grimm fairy tales, but some of these stories go back even farther than that. So this first fairy tale is called The Dead Mother, and this is a Russian fairy tale. It's about a husband and wife that lived happily together and they were awaiting the birth of their baby. Now, once their baby is born, the mother is so happy that she dies. So everyone weeps and mourns and the man hires an old woman to look after the baby. Now, this baby is screaming and crying all day long without stopping. It refuses to eat or do anything. But then when nightfall comes, the baby is silent for some reason. So people started to get very curious about this baby's habits. Why did it cry all day? And why as soon as the sun went down, did it stop? So one day the husband, the old woman, and some of the townsfolk got together and decided to go into the baby's room after nightfall. Now, as soon as they walked into this baby's room one night, they saw the baby's dead mother dressed in her bloodied burial clothes, feeding her baby. The dead mother looks at them and sadly puts her baby to bed and walks out of the room. So they ended up discovering why the baby was so silent at night. It was because it was with its dead mother being comforted by her. And that's how the story ends. Now there's actually alternate endings that I've heard to this story, but this is like the main one. And it gives me the creeps, but it's also super sad. All right, this next story is called The Three Snake Leaves. And this one is a Brothers Grimm story. It's about this poor man who decides one day that he wants to work for the king. So he ends up going to war and defeats all of the king's enemies and basically becomes a hero. And the king takes notice of this. So he brings the hero over and tells them that he should marry his daughter. Now, the king's daughter was a little bit strange. She said she would not marry someone unless they are willing to be sealed up in a tomb with her after she dies. That way her husband would not be able to marry anybody else after she's gone. Now, surprisingly enough, the hero agrees to these terms and ends up marrying the king's daughter. Well, soon after the wedding, the princess gets sick and dies. And as promised, the young man has to be walled up in the tomb alongside her. He was put down there with only some bread, wine, and candles. Well, as he was down there, suddenly this snake slithers into the tomb beside him. So he quickly kills it before it's able to bite him. But then another snake slithers into the tomb and places these magical leaves over the other snake 
snake and the other dead snake comes back to life. So the hero starts to think, what if I put those magical leaves on my dead wife? Would she come back to life? So he tries it and indeed his wife's eyes open again and she comes back to life. But this is not the happy ending that you may think. The wife suddenly declares that she no longer loves her husband and leaves him for another man. Literally after all this poor guy has gone through. And then the wife and this other man that she's chosen throws this poor hero into the water and he dies. But because he was still holding the leaves when he died, he comes back to life and then goes after his wife to destroy her. So wow, a lot of revenge, a lot of weird things going on. Very strange fairy tale. The next story is called The Princess with No Hands, and this is an Italian fairy tale. Now, this story is originally called Penta and the Chopped Off Hands, and it's about this woman named Penta, who grew up as a sister to the king. Now, the king had this very, very beautiful wife, but one day she passed away. And the king said that the only woman who was left in the kingdom who was as beautiful as his wife was Penta. So he says he wants to marry her, but obviously Penta doesn't want to do that because the king is literally family and that's weird. But back in the day that was like super normal. So she decides to make herself as ugly as possible so the king would no longer think she was beautiful and would want to marry her. So she cuts off both of her hands. The king finds out and is horrified by this. So he puts Penta into a crate and throws the crate into the ocean. Now there's so much more to this story and it would take me forever to like talk about it in this video. But that's the gist of it. And it's horrifying. And the last story I'm going to be talking about is another Brothers Grimm story. It's called The Nightingale and the Blind Worm. For many years, a nightingale and a worm live in a house together as really good friends. And the thing is, both of them only have one eye. But that doesn't seem to bother them too much. They're really good friends and they still get through life just fine with only one eye. Well, one day the nightingale is invited to a wedding. So she asks the worm if she can borrow his eye. And the worm says that's totally fine and gives the nightingale his eye to borrow. And that way, when the nightingale goes to the wedding, she'll have two eyes and look all pretty and stuff. Well, when the nightingale gets to the wedding, she realizes that she enjoys having two eyes. And she decides that she's not going to give the second eye back to the worm. Now, obviously, the worm, upon hearing this decision, is super angry and promises the nightingale that he's going to get revenge on her. But the bird just laughed and went to live in a tree. And this fairy tale literally says that this is why worms have no eyes and nightingales live in the tallest trees. Well, the worm ended up sucking out the inside of the nightingale's eggs before they could hatch. And that's how the story ends. So the worm got revenge on the nightingale. And that's uh, interesting. It's just a very, very strange story. And like, if you ever read through the Grimm's fairy tales, they're all so weird. So if you guys want me to do a second video about all this, there are so many other strange fairy tales that I could tell you. So give this video a thumbs up if you want me to do that. And don't forget, if you would like a new fairy necklace, go and check out the Whimsy Wonders Instagram account. And if you would like to win this backdrop, go and follow my Moot YouTube channel. But I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day and I will see you in my next video. Bye!